ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله all praises for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide him, and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves astray, then there's none to guide him. Now I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partner, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, today's khutbah will be regarding a very important topic and it will be a concept and this concept is the foundation of our deen, the foundation of our Islam. So it is very important for us to understand it well and this khutbah and this concept cannot be done in one khutbah. So this will be like an introduction to future khutbas where we will open the doors to speak about some of these things in more detail. And the second reason for this khutbah is to be a reminder to us of what is the most important thing in our deen. And when we are reminded, then we are also reminded that we have to uphold this concept, especially within our families. This concept is the concept of Tawheed. The concept of Tawheed. And before we go forward, I will define what this means for those who are maybe hearing it for the first time. Tawheed in the Arabic language is a masdar, an English <coughs> verbal noun, similar to the verbal noun. And it comes from the Arabic word wahada, yuwahidu, right? to make something one. To make something one. So this concept is found throughout the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet And the scholars have written books from our Salaf and even present day on this topic of what is this Tawheed. And basically it is the core of our Iman. It is the core of our Iman. To make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one in everything that pertains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, all people pretty much around the world, even those that worship many gods, they affirm that there is one creator. And this is even the mushrikeen, the time of the Prophet وسلم, affirmed this as we will see in the ayat. However, this does not make them Muslim. Right? Believing that there's a creator does not make a person a Muslim. For all of the prophets and messengers that came, they did not came, they did not come to prove the existence of Allah. This is something instinct, right? This is something in our fitrah. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith, that every newborn is born with this fitrah, with this inclination to believe in Allah. There's no need to try to prove it. And even those who negate the existence of Allah, they only do that with their tongue, with their tongues. But in reality, when they are put to the test, 
they themselves affirm that Allah is the creator, as we will see in the ayat. So this concept of Tawheed, you know, some people will say, oh, what are you talking about Tawheed for? This is so easy. And anyways, you should talk about, you know, other things. And But it is so important that we have a hadith from Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he says, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I heard the Messenger of Allah when uh, to say, Lama bu'itha Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal nahwa Yemen to Yemen, to the people of Yemen. And he says, Innaka taqdamu ala qawmin min ahl al-kitab. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is instructing Mu'ad, and he tells him, You are going to the people of Ahl al-kitab, the Jews and Christians. For at that time, the people of Yemen, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, were Jews and Christians. And he said, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَيُّ اللَّهِ And this hadith, by the way, is in Sahih al-Bukhari. It says that let the, أول شيء, let the first thing that you call them to, and you Allah, to make Allah one, to fix their belief. Right? Think about it. The Prophet ﷺ is sending Mu'ad to the people of the book, those who believe in Allah, the Jews and the Christians. And he's telling them what? He didn't tell them, uh, command them to accept me as a messenger, command them to do salah. No, none of that. Awwal, the first thing, and you Allah, that they affirm that Allah is one. That they make Allah one in all that pertains to Allah. That they believe in Allah properly. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran when he talks about the Nasara, the Christians, do not say three. Negating the concept of Trinity. So the Prophet sends Mu'ad and he says, And there's the term, and Yuwahidullah. Tawheed. فَإِذَا عَرَفُوا ذَلِكَ and if they know that, they accept that. فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ فَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي يَوْمِهِمْ وَلَيْلَتِهِمْ And he says, that if they know that and they affirm that, then, after that, then inform them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ Five daily prayers in the day and night. فَإِذَا صَلُّوا if they establish that, they pray the khamsa salawat, then what? فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ زَكَاةً فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ Then inform them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon them zakah fi amwalihim, zakatul mal, right? purification of their wealth. تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ غَنِيِّهِمْ It is to be taken from the rich of them. فَتُرَدُّ عَلَىٰ فَقِيرِهِمْ And return to the faqir, to the fuqara, to the needy ones. فَإِذَا أَقَرُّ بِذَلِكَ فَخُذْ مِنْهُمْ وَتَوَقَّ كَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ And he advised him, said, if they أَقَرُّ بِذَلِكَ They affirm that, then take from them that wealth, but beware not to take the karam al-amwal, the best amwal. And those who understand zakat, zakat, the people who take zakat are not allowed to take the best of a person's wealth, right? I would say the, the A plus. If you have wealth, depending on what it is, the person who collects zakat should take from the outset, from the middle of zakat. So the people are not harmed when you take the best goods. So this hadith gives us an understanding of the pillars of Islam that the Prophet ﷺ sent him with. And there's another narration mentions all of the pillars as well. But the reason I mentioned this hadith from Bukhari is because it has the term and Yuwahidullah, that they establish the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They make Allah one. The concept of Tawheed, simply put, is making Allah unique, making Allah one and only, making Him unique, in everything that pertains to Allah. Allah being the Lord of everything, His right to be worshipped, and He is the only one, the Tawheed and the uniqueness of Allah and His names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran, He 
he challenges the disbelievers. The Mushrikeen, he tells the Prophet Sallallahu He tells the Prophet Sallallahu tell them, who is the one who provides for you from the heavens and the earth? Hmm? Who is the provider? And we should see ourselves in these ayat. Even though they are directed to the mushrikeen, we should see the lessons that are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a reminder for us, that who is the one who provides for us from the heavens and the earth? And who is the one who is the owner of the sam'ah wal absar, the hearing, the seeing? Think about those two blessings, my dear brothers. And right now we are you know, seeing each other with these eyes. How much is that ni'mah worth? Right? Who is the one, if you became blind, who is the only one who can return your, your, your sight or your hearing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَخْرُجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّدِ And the one who takes out the hay min al the things that are alive from the things that are dead. وَيَخْرُجَ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ And who is the one who يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Who controls everything? Right? Who is the one who has control over everything, the whole universe? فَسَيَقُولُونَ Allah. They will say Allah. The mushrikeen, the disbelievers, will affirm. They will say, Allah. Allah is the one who is the provider. Allah is the one who is the maintainer of the universe, the controller of everything. Then, فَقُلْ Then say, أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Are you not, do you not have taqwa? Do you not have fear? Do you, are you not afraid of what you're doing? That you're affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you worship others besides Him. This is the meaning of this ayah. It goes to show that the disbelievers affirm that Allah exists and that He is the creator and the sustainer and maintainer. However, that did not make them Muslim. All of the slaves of Allah affirm this. And as I mentioned, even those who deny the existence of Allah, when it actually they themselves or their families are put to the test, at the end, when everything is exhausted, when the doctors have been exhausted, everything they will, even though they disbelieve in Allah, they will say, you know, let me try that too. So they are only lying to themselves when they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah testifies also to this in Surah An Kabut. He says, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْقِ That when they go on the ships, دَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ and in other ayat, it talks about the same uh, scenario where when they go on the ships on the oceans and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the huge waves to crash on their ships and they're in fear of their lives. There's no safety, there's no land. It's water, it's drowning. What do they do? They call out to Allah. They don't call out to Allah and their idols and their gods or to their gods. They make Ikhlas, sincerity to Allah alone. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them, saves their lives, إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ And He gives them the safety of the land, they come back to the land, then they become mushrikeen again. Meaning they say, oh, we were saved by this God, or we were saved by this, or we were saved by that. When it really came down, at the moment when they're about to meet the death, that's when they, you know, seek out Allah. And I've witnessed this with my own eyes, people who are, you know, communists, disbelievers in Allah. But when that ruh comes, they would say anything that they know about Islam, but it does not work. And so the point of this is believing in the existence of Allah Affirming that He's our Creator and our Provider is not enough. That is known. So what are we supposed to do? That's why some of the ulama have divided the concept of Tawheed to Al-Ma'rifatu wal ithbat to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other part is what is expected from us. What do we have to do? Like, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb, the Lord. And He is the one who owns all of the perfect names and attributes. 
but for us is to worship Him. That is our responsibility. And that is why all of the messengers were sent, is to rectify the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look throughout the Qur'an, all of the prophets and messengers, they said the same message to their people. Worship Allah alone. That was their message. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have sent to every nation, every ummah, every community, Rasulan, a messenger saying, أَنِ أَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِ بُالْتَوْبِ Very simple. Worship Allah and avoid the ta'ud. Ta'ud is other things that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands in Surah Al-Baqarah, all of mankind, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah is talking to mankind. He's not talking about to the believers. Right? He's talking about all of mankind that worship Allah alone. Then he says, أَلَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ he talks about his lordship, that he is the one who created the earth for you. And he brings down the rain and causes the rizq, the tamarat, the fruits. He is the one who nurtures you. So do not knowingly, now that you know that Allah is your creator, your sustainer, the maintainer of the universe. So do not knowingly set up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Equals to him, rivals. Basically, do not commit shirk to Allah. Worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, if we do not worship Allah, what will happen? Some people say, well, you know, if I stop praying, right, nothing's happening to me. Allah is not striking me down. Don't try to hurry up the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this dunya is very short compared to the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He warns who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ He said, it has been revealed to you, O Messenger of Allah, and the ones before you, the messengers before you, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ If you made shirk with Allah, your deeds would be destroyed, would be worthless. Everything you did in your whole entire life would be in vain. All the so-called good actions, if you did, they would be in vain. وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you would be among the losers, meaning on the Day of Judgment. So not having this proper tawheed and giving your actions to someone else other than Allah, those actions become worthless, invalid. So this is a very serious issue that Allah is warning not only us, but He's warning the Prophet directly as He warned the previous Prophets and Messengers. And I'll end this part of the khutbah with an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of those who disbelieve in their Lord, the parable, that their deeds, what happens to their, their deeds are like ashes that are blown away, scattered in a day, when a stormy day. That they're, they're so worthless that they're like dust particles, ashes being blown around. They gain nothing from what they did. Their actions are worthless. They have no weight. If they were to put on a scale, they are worthless. That indeed is the, the thing that is astray. So we have to understand that Everything we're doing in this dunya has to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that is something easier said than done. And that's why, you know, in, in our Islam, even when we do an action, 
We're supposed to guard it after the fact. What are we guarding? We're guarding the ikhlas, the sincerity. You know, if you give something for the sake of Allah, you don't go around and saying, I did this, I built this, I built a masjid, I did that. Right? Because that decreases your ikhlas, your sincerity, that affects your tawheed to the point where people do things and Allah is not even in their mind. Right? They leave legacies for their communities. You know? So this is very dangerous. That's why this concept is very important. Inshallah, in the second part of the khutbah, I will mention some more virtues and importance of this tawheed. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وإسائل المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب الأرش العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم إلى يوم الدين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. The virtues and importance of this tawheed meaning what is the value of knowing this tawheed? What do we do with it? I will briefly, for the sake of time, just mention a couple of them, inshallah. Number one, it is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon his slaves. And we might hear that the, the greatest blessing is Islam. Yes, indeed, this is Islam. This is the core of Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us this understanding. That is the greatest blessing. And the proof for that, if you look at the Qur'an in Surah Nahl, the Surah that talks about, it got its name from the bee. If you look at generally the whole Surah, it talks about blessings that Allah bestows upon us. If you read the Surah, there are many, many blessings that Allah subhanahu wa talks about. But in the beginning of the Surah, Allah starts with the first blessing. يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَاهِكَةَ بِالرُّوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ Tawheed right there. That warn the humanity under Prophet is commanded to warn what? That there's no God worthy of worship except me, so be mindful of me alone. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding and showing us the blessing of Tawheed. Before he even mentioned the other things in Surah Al Nahl, he starts off with Tawheed. The second thing is Tawheed is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of us and all of the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا al الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That's our reason, that's why we exist. That to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very simple, if we understand that, many of our you know, things will be rectified. You know, sometimes some people say, oh, if we, if we know this, you know, why do we keep repeating the same thing? The reality is if we knew this and we implemented it, our Jum'ah numbers would be our regular Salah numbers. Our Dhuhr, our Asr, our Fajr would be the same amount of people. The fact that we have many numbers on Jum'ah and less people on other Salahs is because there's, not that people are busy, yes, you know, some percent, but there is a clear deficiency in Iman, right? You know, on the understanding of the Tawheed. Now, the third thing is, it is also the reason for revelation. If we think about why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send so many messengers? What was the reason? From the time of Adam alayhi salam, all of the people were upon Tawheed. Until eventually they went astray and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the first messenger, Nuh alayhi salam. And he called his people to Tawheed, to worship Allah alone. And only a few people accepted the call. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved those people and drowned everyone else. And then again, after many, many generations, the people again went astray from the pure belief in Allah. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers. And so he sent the last and final messenger. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fourth thing is, 
Tawheed is the reason that all the hardships and difficulties are repelled. As I demonstrated in the ayah, where when they were in trouble on the sea, what saved them? Not their intellect, not their numbers, not their ships, right? Their belief in Allah, their tawheed. When they called out Allah mukhlisin al deen. You know, one interesting thing is when if you talk to people who converted to Islam, and you talk to many of them, you will see a very consistent thing. And that is they called out to Allah alone in any way they knew. Right? Many of them, they were confused. They didn't, you know, so they called out Allah to Allah, to God alone, without doing their regular type of ritual that they might be used to in their church or anything. They would call out to Allah for guidance and Allah guides them to Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond whenever He is called out alone, when there's ikhlas done. And He will respond even to those who are not Muslims. If they do ikhlas, if they call upon him with ikhlas. And the last thing is tawheed, my dear brothers and sisters, is the only reason that people will be taken out from Jahannam. There are many things that will get people into Jahannam, even Muslims by falling to Jahannam. For on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who come and who are Muslims who are believers in him, if they have transgressed so much, Allah can forgive them regardless of their deeds, or He can choose to punish them for a time, to purify them in the hellfire. But eventually they will be taken out from the hellfire. And Tawheed is the only thing. How do we know that? The Prophet said, <coughs> When the people of Jannah enter Jannah, and the people of the hellfire, Enter the hellfire. Everything is pretty much done. Yaqulullahu man kana fi qalbihi mithqalu habbatin min khadalin in al iman fa akhriju. Then Allah will say after that, after the fire has already got its people, that whosoever has mithqalu khadal, the amount of the mustard seed of iman fa akhriju, take him out of, take him out of Jahannam. He has a small amount of iman. Small amount of belief in Allah, small amount of tawheed, he will be taken out from Jahannam. He will be saved. And whoever does not have anything, he will remain in there forever. And then the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith, he explains how then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take those people out and sorrow fahma, they will be, they will be burnt from the hellfire. And they will be put into a nahar, into a river, the river of life. And they will come out fresh, just like if you would put a seed in, in water, the, after a while you see it what, sprouting, right? Lush and green. And this is the example the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith, is also in Sahih al Bukhari. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, this topic is very important, and inshallah in the future we will talk in detail more about each of these categories and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we may remind ourselves and learn about the, the foundation of our Islam. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding of Tawheed and the Tawheed to apply it in our lives and to make us from those who enter Jannah bila hisab wala adab. Ibad Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuhaladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tislima اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكرف إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ضب النار إن الله يأمر بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم 
واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا صفوفكم